Welcome back to the Godly Woman Podcast Season 2. Um, I am going to start off this year strong <laughs> with an ebook, and it's called Striding Over Striving, Seven Days to Resting in God's Finished Work. And for the first episode of this new season, I'm going to talk about um, the season that I've been in personally, where God is taking me for the new year, and a little bit about what the ebook is about. So I hope you guys um, can tune in. Hi guys, welcome back to the Godly Woman Podcast, season two, episode one. Um, I took quite a break because as you can see, I'm in a different place, different background. Um, me and my husband moved from downtown Chicago to the suburbs of Chicago. Um, we're not that far from the city. We're like 40, 45 minutes, so not too far, but we just want a new space and um, it was just our season to get out of the one bedroom apartment and to have just like more space and more uh, room to do our personal everyday things. Um, so yeah, the last few months I've been busy setting up the house and setting up this area for filming um, so I can start being more consistent with these episodes. And um, I also wanted to go into sharing um, some personal things that's been, that's been going on like spiritually in the last few months only because I feel like it would really help you guys to get a practical view of like the things I talk about. Like, you know, a lot of my posts, I say discovering your gifts and calling through the journey, or I'll say, um, you know, following the seasons God has you in and things like that. And when I say those things, I don't just say them, but God actually has me walking out those things in real life. So, um, yeah. So as you guys know, from episode one, I talked about um, being a housewife and all of that. Um, and this is my first year of marriage, and that is exactly what God had me do this year. That was my season, to learn how to manage my home, um, to learn how to be a wife. And there were days where it was like, you know, a little mundane, and it's like, okay, Lord, anything else? And that was it. That was all the Lord told me to do in this season. Um, but as I was obedient to what God wanted me to do in this season— he actually revealed to me or I discovered a new gift of mine that I didn't know I had, and that is the gift of hospitality. And I would have never bumped into that gift if I wasn't obedient this past year and just the mundane things of taking care of my home. Um, and how I found out about this new gift was um, maybe back in July, the Lord put on my heart a scripture that is in Matthew, and um, I can't remember the exact verses, but... Um, I'm going to paraphrase it, but the Lord, what Jesus in the scripture says, do not only invite people like of prestige or people that you know to your home that can give something back to you, but also invite the lame, the sick, the blind, and people like that that can't give anything back to you. And as this scripture was laid on my heart and I started pressing into it and praying why I was getting this scripture, the Holy Spirit revealed to me that that was going to be my life. That was going to be you know, I'm sure I'll do ministry outside of the home, but a lot of my ministry is going to be at my home using my hospitality gift. And that is why he had me being trained in the home, learning how to manage it, you know, keep everything running smoothly and learning how to take care of my husband so that I can take care of other people when I open the door for them and have them stay. So with all that being said, um, as I continued to press into that and learning something new about myself, I got a book about hospitality, hospitality to learn more about it. And also I was getting um, confirmation. So I didn't tell my husband that the Lord had gave me that scripture yet. And he actually even had a dream about it. And then when he got the dream interpreted, our spiritual father confirmed without even knowing either, he said, God is putting the gift of hospitality on you. And that's, he, that's one of the ways he's going to use you. So that was a confirmation after I was sensitive to what God was telling me that I discovered in that new season. So this was, we were still downtown in our one bedroom apartment. So I assumed, okay, you know, that's going to be in the future and we have a bigger home and we can host more people and stuff like that. But as soon as we moved from there to here, I have had people in my home every week since we moved in. <laughs> so that's another reason why I haven't been recording. Um, you know, on top of fixing up the house and things like that, when you first move in, 
I've been hosting. I've had people here every single week since we moved in. And I believe it's because now we have a guest room, we have room for them, but I believe he's also calling me to steward that new gift, that newfound gift that he showed me, so that way he can even, um, you know, expand that gift later. I don't know what that's going to look like later, but as long as I steward it well now, he can always expand it to even outside of the home for who knows what. So I just thought that was a really um, good way or a good thing to share with you guys so you can kind of see what living by the Spirit and living, um, just being obedient to the season that God has you in and what that actually entails and looks like practically. Um, So with that being said, we're in a new year now. It's 2021. God is still moving regardless of what's happening in the physical world with COVID and all of that um, because there is life after COVID. So God is still speaking about our futures, about our destinies, and it is not time for us to just you know, do nothing and think because bad things are happening around us that we, that God isn't still moving. So I personally like to get words for the new year instead of new, doing a new year's resolution or getting, or writing down specific tasks. Because for me, specific tasks are just kind of, I end up not doing them, like work out this day or do this this day. Or like when it's too specific like that, I feel like it ends up being something I have to do instead of something I get to do. Um, So then I just don't end up doing it. But um, instead I look for words, just overall general words that I can focus on and that I sense the Lord telling me. So that way my actions are kind of like a catalyst or those words are a catalyst for my actions. So for example, my three words were unashamed, courage, and intentional. So I... um, The reason why I felt so strongly the first one was unashamed, for sure, um, was because I feel like I spent the majority of 2019, after me and my husband got married, and this year, um, kind of like, how can I say it, like, ashamed of what good things God is doing in my life, and almost scared of sharing it with people because I didn't want them to feel bad or uncomfortable because maybe they weren't there yet. So instead of feeling like, oh, I can empower this person and encourage them and I need to share it because this is what God does. He restores, there's breakthrough, there's miracles that happen. And, you know, people need to know that there's a way out of their struggles, of, you know, things that they're going through. But instead, the enemy made me feel ashamed and I wasn't walking in my full potential. I wasn't walking in who God was creating me to be. I wasn't walking in the blessings, like, in the favor of God fully because I had this, like, false guilt over me um, for having a good life, you know? And it's not that it's perfect, but it is overall good. (laughs) I I don't have, you know, much to complain about, and I will share with you guys later, like, how my life has changed since I got married and what a drastic um, difference my life has turned for the good and what God did in that season to get me out of my past season. Um, so, yeah, I just feel like, especially on social media, like, a lot of times, um, people almost feel like in order to be relatable, they have to be, you know, share only their struggles and stuff like that, which I feel like just creates, um, more of, like, a pity party (laughs) than anything. Like, yeah, it's cool, like, you found somebody or people that have gone through what you've gone through, but there's no hope, there's no redemption, there's no breakthrough or miracles, that can show them that, you know, there's something else outside of that and you can be free. So in order for you guys to walk in freedom or anybody that's assigned to me to walk in freedom, I have to walk in that same freedom. So that's why I felt walking unashamed this year was like something that I just absolutely had to do, just not ashamed of the blessings of God in my life, the favor of God in my life, and that it's a good season and it's a good life. And right now it's, good and there's nothing to be ashamed of and there's nothing to um, have false guilt over and that instead you know I can pull people up to where I am as I keep going from glory to glory the people around me can also do the same and there will be people you know if anybody out there is like feeling the way I'm feeling maybe having false guilt of like you know just God doing good things in your life like there will be people that get jealous 
But then there will be those people that will be teachable and take heed to what is happening in your life. And they're going to want to know, like, okay, how do, how do I, you know, get from here to there? And how does God take me through that process? Um, so, yeah, don't be afraid of criticism from other people because there are people out there that will take heed to your life and that do want freedom and do want experience also what you're experiencing with God. Um, so, and then the second word was courage because... Um, well, without courage, you don't really do anything. You know what I mean? Like, you can have all the knowledge, all the wisdom, um, all the skill, everything. But without courage and without boldness, you're just going to do nothing with it. All that stuff is going to just be buried talent because um, you're not breaking out into that spirit of courage and boldness so that way you can actually step out and do what God has called you to do, no matter how scary it is, no matter, you know, how unknown that area may be to you. So, you know, that's why I chose, or not chose, but that's why the Lord put on my heart <laughs> courage. And then the last word was intentional because, um, like I said, instead of, you know, putting specific tasks together, I'd rather be intentional every day I wake up. Like I have something over here on my board that says, um, I enjoy being productive and purposeful. And then another one that says, align your daily activities to your destiny. So it could be the littlest thing. Like I said, last season, my daily activities that ended up aligning with my destiny was ordinary mundane things, washing dishes, washing clothes, taking care of my home. It doesn't have to be anything extraordinary. Um, cause I feel like God works within the ordinary to eventually make it extraordinary. Um, those are These are like your training grounds. So even in your ordinary everyday life, even those things can be done unto the Lord and can be seen as successful to God. So when you're aligning your daily activities with your destiny or your purpose or whatever, you know, you want to make sure that you're not going by what the world sees as success. Um, because like I said, Last season, my daily activities, like I, I don't want to repeat myself, but like I was saying was um, doing those everyday mundane, mundane things at the house. And to the outside world, that probably doesn't seem successful. That probably doesn't seem like it's a task that even aligns with your destiny. Um, you know, it seems super ordinary and boring and just regular. But for God, it was actually really important for me. And there can be other things that seem ordinary and mundane that God actually deems um important for you and that it's you know part of like your training grounds for the extraordinary and for like the amazing things that he will do in the future um so yeah just don't worry about like it looking successful to others but knowing that you're in the will of God and that whatever little task he has you doing daily is going to be you know just those little seeds and that little snowball effect that eventually turns into something big later um so yeah, so with that being said, I have a new ebook coming out um, probably in the next week or so. I thought it was a really good subject to um, bring out during this time with the new year, with you know people setting goals and stuff like that, um, because a lot of times you know we can get into that hustling mode and. Um, just doing things just to do them and then not having any regard for God's will or God's timing. Um, so the new ebook is called Striding Over Striving, Seven Days Into um, Resting in God's Finished Work. So it's going to be seven day devotional. It's not really that long, but I just take you through some steps on how to enter God's rest, like in your soul. So you're resting like spiritually in your soul and then also even resting like with um, doing. You know, a lot of times in our society, um, they say do and God says be. You know, be still and know that I am God. And it doesn't mean that we don't do anything. Um, but like I said, even the smallest of tasks, as long as you're being obedient in that season, forget what everybody else thinks is successful or doing something or as doing something big. Um, so yeah, that's basically what the ebook is about. And I'm so excited for it to come out. And I will be, um, once it comes out, so make sure that you get the ebook once it goes live because then the next 
seven episodes of the podcast. I'm going to be actually going through each day and just um, giving more pointers, more personal experiences. Because again, like this is something that God has been talking to me personally about for probably almost two years. So I've actually lived it and I've learned how to rest in God's finished work and um, just being confident in the fact that like he has everything down to the T. I don't have to be afraid of the future. And as long as I have trust, I have faith, and I'm obedient to whatever task he has me doing in each season, everything is going to come to pass the way it should. And, you know, I really don't have to hustle. I don't have to bustle. I don't have to, you know, find connections, do this, do that. Like, he pretty much does everything as long as you do what um, as long as you tend to the field that he causes you to tend to in each season. So yeah, I'm excited for you guys to read it. And um, if you want, you can actually comment below maybe your words that you got for the new year and um, or New Year's resolutions if you still do that, just so I can see like where God is um, taking you guys for this year, 2021. So uh, thank you guys for listening in and I'll see you soon.